Now, once we're done with cleaning up our artwork, um, we can still have this option to further expand the path and uh, merge all um, similar colors. But in our case, we only have a black color for our art line. So you don't need to do this step, but again, uh, this is an option. So from this on, we can now start coloring our artwork. To uh, perform that, we need to apply or use the Live Paint Bucket tool. So Live Paint Bucket tool simply uh, resides from our tools panel here, right there. Okay, then we can just simply paint over our artwork. But before uh, we do that, we need to make or perform this method, this object life paint, and then make. Okay, so let me create a new layer and then put it here, our cleaned up um, artwork or line art. We can now select this object. We can now proceed to object go to live paint and then click make by doing this step will enable us to use the live paint bucket so this one is an essential um, method or action to do to do that okay now since uh, we have performed that uh, method I can now go to uh, click this live paint bucket here Okay. And then I can now start selecting some colors and then you can just uh, paint over your artwork here okay so let me select something um, red in color and I can just point out here on his eyes like that okay then we can now paint over uh, this area with some colors so in my case, I have like uh, the colors for my uh, swatches panel. Okay, so I have uh, created some um, color swatches here. What I can do now is to click the Live Paint Bucket tool from the Tools panel. And then I can go proceed here on my swatches panel. Let me drag this up here. Then let me choose this. Um, this color to paint over somewhere here like that so you can just simply click the area so that you want to have these color like that maybe you can select the white for his eyes here like that and um, you can select like a dark color from here right there all right and then um, from this on we can apply the uh, shadow effect so to perform shadow effect let me create a new layer there will be some more ways on how to apply shadow but uh, in our example I'll be showing you uh, maybe one of the ways on how to add that okay so I have created a new layer with this shadow I have locked my uh, layer with this artwork now so from this on from this layer shadow I can uh, use my tools here maybe I can use pen tool I can start uh, making some shapes like that then I can change the color of this maybe I will select this color that I have created like that and then I can now go to uh, a panel that's being called um, transparency panel okay so transparency panel can be accessed from here okay and then you can adjust the blending options of your um, shape okay so if you don't see any transparency panel you can just go to window and then just uh, find transparency panel here 
Alright, so in my case, I have my transparency panel available. From here. Uh, okay. Right there. So, when I click this shape and then change some blending options here, let's say I'm going to try darken. You'll notice some changes here that uh, the color applies to this shape. So, you get the idea. We can create some custom shape now to apply um, some shadow style on this example, on this artwork. Or even highlight if you want like that. Mm. Okay, so let me delete this shape now and then I'm going to use my pen tool to create a shape. Maybe let's put some shadow on this part. So again, remember this is being created on a different um, layer. Like that. Then I can go um, select this uh, shape by clicking this and then go to transparency panel and maybe let's choose multiply. In that case, we have just applied uh, a good shadow effect. We can still click this and then apply some opacity um, adjustments. So to lower down the color, but I guess maybe somewhere 90% is good. Um, let's do this again with our pen tool. Let me put some here so it's like we're putting some uh, on its eye bag then we can perform or use this um, direct selection tool to further modify these points So you get the idea on how to adjust uh, some paths like that. And then from here on, I can um, click or select this path. I can go choose transparency panel and then apply the same settings. But uh, what I usually do is this. I can go click this shape. And then uh, I'm going to click this eyedropper tool. In that case, I can go now click this so to get these properties and when we get these properties using the eyedropper tool the properties are just being applied to this new shape that we have selected so when i click again the uh, eyedropper tool while well, i have this shape selected and then by clicking this area you'll notice that it uh, applied the same settings that we have on this part right so from there, we can uh, still adjust this, of course, using our direct selection tool, like that. And then we can put some more on here. So using our pen tool again, You can go now select these, go to eyedropper tool, and then uh, we can click this area to apply the same settings like that. 
um, again we can work around with pen tool again to add some more details on our artwork like maybe on this area And uh, by applying these, the same uh, techniques that we're doing right now, we can actually um, achieve the same output that we have here on my example. So here in my example, I have this um, artwork that have these um, colors using the live paint bucket tool. And then I also have the uh, shadow um, layer here where I put some uh, details on this area like that. Of course, I have adjusted the uh, transparency of these shadows and then put some more details on this part. So to retain some of that. Now, as for the last step of this artwork, what we can uh, do more to... Uh, apply some improvement or adjustments to this also it depends on your uh, preferred art style of course but just in case you want to uh, apply some gradient color on this and some adding some more highlights on this area and gradient or what um, we can um, further modify our artwork and i'll show you how i did this example or this output Okay. So, given that we have this example, let me um, duplicate this layer. And what we need to do here is we need to separate our outline with our actual uh, life paint um, color from the life paint bucket tool. Okay. So I can just uh, turn off the shadow part on this. Let's focus on this layer. And from this layer on, what I need to do is to apply some gradient uh, color and some maybe highlights on this. So to further modify this, um, there are too many ways to do that. But let me show you uh, how I did on my uh, example or what, or what I did in my example like this. So uh, let's have this. Uh, methods so what I do usually do is I'm selecting this artwork or I can select this artwork then I can further uh, go here to object and then expand the idea of doing this is I want to get uh, these outlines and these colors be separated on each other because right now it's like a life paint uh, object so I can now go to object then expand click OK you can also perform further expanding method just to be sure of our steps now um, you'll notice here that using my direct selection tool I can now just drag this area outside of that line artwork which is very interesting to do so we can perform multiple selections so to select that part I can go um, copy or maybe let's let's cut this color like that and then on our um, layer let me have here a layer with fill colors or solid colors where uh, I have copied the uh, fill colors earlier and I can now paste it in place paste in place or control shift v like that same thing but the difference is we just applied uh, the, layer the layering technique here like that so to get further colors we can um, get these red um, colors here maybe using my uh, 
direct selection tool again we can select all of that or we can proceed with uh, isolation mode uh, something like that okay I think um, we can get this colors here like that by uh, going inside the isolation mode and then pointing this layer and then pasting it paste in place Control shift v will put those colors inside this layer next thing is this hair part right here so i can now go click it using my direct selection tool like that and then let's perform a multiple selection from this part like that I can go cut that and I can do also another layer for the hair it doesn't matter if you want to put it uh, outside another layer or you want it to be uh, on the same layer of this fill colors but uh, yeah we can prefer do this so do, just to further organize our um, output now we can rename this as the outlines okay so by having the outlines as the upper layer fill here and the fill color is right there we can now have this output the same output okay now i would like to perform or to add some maybe highlights to the hair since we have this more organized i can just unlock the fill here and i can um, have some um, highlights on this let me use a tool that's called um, knife tool okay so using this knife we can just literally um, slice up our artwork or fill colors so given I can um, toggle this off the outline and then the fill color maybe so from this on this here part I can actually like um, a draw something like this a line like that that can separate this area into this one so using my direct selection tool now let me check that you'll notice that it's kind of being sliced um, so when I roll over this mouse you'll see that this portion is being uh, overed or highlighted separately right so when you click on this area using direct selection tool and then maybe we can choose a more um, lighter color or maybe we can actually do this uh, in opposite way I can click this area and then we can choose like a darker color of this right there so you'll notice that the, uh, the sliced part on this area was not selected or the color was not changed because again the feel area on this is being um, sliced up so again that was um, possible using this knife tool so again you can um, select some areas on this to put some highlights so I can select this area like that of course this is not the only way to do some highlights but again you get the idea so when you click that we can click eyedropper tool click this area so to have some properties like that it may not be the perfect tool for this but mm, you can also perform some like using pen tool you can um, let me change the properties first so using my pen tool I can create a path on this area even without the stroke so just like to draw something like that and then now we can uh, select this this part given that we have this invisible path on here we can select this area 
then we can now proceed to pathfinder tool we can click this divide um, option inside and by doing that uh, we just literally sliced this up this area so next thing to do is you can go double click here to go inside the isolation mode so double click and then you'll see here in this part that this area is now being sliced so this is the other way or other option to slice some things up like this so using your eyedropper i can now click this area like that right so in that case i can now uh, slice up my fill colors um, freely without touching the outlines of my artwork okay now to put some gradient colors on it um, we can go proceed with the face color here you can also do that with the hair but in this case i can go select this area like that so let's select that this gradient color like that and then after selecting this area and this gradient color uh, which I edited here using my uh, gradient sliders I can go now click this gradient tool and then I can adjust these up like that so I can just click and drag actually this area Okay, and then uh, that's the gradient tool that we have here that's why we can adjust this part and then also in this part I can um, further modify my gradient by moving this up or adjust these sliders Okay. All right. So we have applied the gradient color in that, and also we can apply that to the hair part. Uh, I know we need more details for the highlights here, but again, we can apply. Uh, we can just apply the gradient color right now. So from the gradient panel, uh, I can select maybe the black and white color, and then we can just double click this. Um, color stop so just to select a darker color like that area or maybe a more lighter I guess and then while still being selected we can go to gradient tool and then adjust the gradient here like that now we can just turn on our outlines and then this fill here and to have that effect so right now um, what I have shown you class is that we can actually um, have more color uh, adjustments to our artwork with the help of gradient tool and the gradient panel just make sure you have the right color to apply and you can go experiment and work with your artwork and um, yeah so uh, from this point um, I hope you have enjoyed um, watching and learning from this example and uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you again next time goodbye